Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today we're going to be talking about the delights of composition. When I first started photography, I was pretty bad at composition. I was more or less a point and shoot kind of photographer. I knew what I wanted to photograph, I just didn't know how to make the image the best I could on my negative. Well, other people critiqued my photographs, more experienced photographers taught me tricks and tips and in the end, I got better and better at composition. And it's that that I want to help you with today. Now, I have an acronym that I built up over the years that I'm going to teach you today uh, so that you can hopefully go through the acronym whenever you're going to take a photograph and improve the image. So let's get on the computer. We're going to take a pragmatic view at some of my photographs and I'll tell you about the acronym as we go along. So here we are at the computer and I'm going to go through the delights of composition. And like I said, this is something that I learned over many years and created this acronym uh, as a way of remembering how to compose photographs. And let's have a look at the acronym itself. So D-E-L-I-G-H-T-S, delights. What does that mean? Well, we're going to go through each one. First of all, though, let me quickly describe them to you. So D means don't divide. We're going to look at these, remember, in a moment with some real photographs. Um, but I want you to see these first. So you've got something in your mind to start with. E is for edges. L is for leading lines. I is for intersecting lines. G is for good contrast. H, help the eye. T, tone attracts. And S, simplicity can break the rules. Now, it sounds like a lot to remember, and that's okay. Uh, at first you won't remember these, but I'm going to give you a link uh, where you can download a cheat sheet and use these when you're out taking photographs. And very soon you will remember this acronym and it will jog your memory as you're setting up your photograph. And hopefully um, you'll see some opportunities in improving the image. So let's go through these one by one. D is for don't divide. And if you look at this photograph of a nearby fishing village, you can see I have divided the horizon right in half. And that is this rule. It's the first rule. Just don't divide your photograph in half. It just makes for a poor image. Now, in this photograph, I was actually attracted by the light on these wooden posts that are running along the shoreline. And this is where the old fishing boats used to come up alongside and tie up and offload their catch. Now they've not been used for many, many years, but they really are attractive when the sun is glancing in the way it is and really making them stand out. So this was the first picture I took and it just wasn't a very good photograph. The second one though is where I got it right. And there you can see by just tilting down the camera, I've taken the horizon up to the top third of the image. The sky is not important in this photograph. I don't need to include the sky. What is important are these posts that I wanted to photograph and that lovely contrast along the seafront of this village. So I think you'd agree that is a better photograph than the first one. So D, don't divide. So E is for edges and edges of your photograph are very important. You don't want things coming in the edge of the photograph that will distract the viewer. So here, as an example, I have on the right hand side these little trees and a little bit of fence. And there's not enough of them to be of any advantage in the photograph. And they're really just messing up the right hand edge. So what I needed to do was just swing the camera very slightly to the left just to cut those off. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So here you can see I've just moved the camera very slightly right and I've no longer got that messy little tree and fence posts in the right. And on the left I've actually moved that tree in slightly so that's helpful too for the photograph. So I think that makes for a slightly better photograph and every little bit counts. This was a cute little button bend cottage that was on a road running down into Loch Ranza on the Isle of Arran. And you see the little chickens there running around on the road. It was such a picturesque little scene. And the sun was just perfect, wasn't it? 
bouncing off the roof of that house and creating lovely contrast throughout the scene. Let's have a look at L. So L is about leading lines. Now, what do I mean by leading lines? Well, you may have heard of the rule of thirds. The photograph is partitioned in thirds in your mind's eye. And each of those lines that run across a third of the image is a leading line. Let's have a look. I'm going to place the leading lines on this image. There they are. And you can see the Celtic cross that I was photographing, I placed right on a leading line. Even the tree on the right hand side is close to a leading line. You don't have to be right on these leading lines. You can be slightly to one side or the other or above or below one of the horizontal leading lines. That's okay. But just try to be kind of close to them. It really helps to balance the photograph. I was so lucky with this particular shot that I could get the sun coming through the hole in the Celtic cross. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, I is next. Let's have a look at that. I is about intersecting lines. Now we've seen the leading lines. The intersecting lines are where they cross, those leading lines where they cross. I'm going to put that grid back on this photograph so we can see where the intersecting lines are and we can talk more about them. There they are. And this was a photograph of a sunset. It was from Locranza, actually around about the same time as I took the earlier one of the Button Ben Cottage and the chickens. And you can see here those thirds again are on there. Those leading lines have been placed on this image for you to see. And I put the sun right on one of those intersections. If leading lines are powerful in a photograph, then the intersection of those lines is very powerful. And it's a really good place to put something that you want to enhance emotionally in the image. We are very lucky here. Look, we've even got the reflection of the sun on the leading line. That's really good. And I'm happy with the horizon. It's just below a leading line across the lower horizontal leading line. And of course, the sky is the focus of this image for want of a better expression. And the sky was really important to me. So that takes up most of the image, those beautiful clouds. So I, it's for intersection, the intersection of those leading lines, very powerful places to put objects that are important in your photograph. G is for good contrast. And that doesn't just mean good contrast in the whole of the photograph. You need that anyway as a black and white photographer to have good contrast. No, it means good contrast around your subject. Now, here is my subject, these two mountaineers on top of a mountain in the Cairngorms. And you can see that I've placed them against that lighter background. So they really stand out. There's some good contrast between my subject and that background. If those mountaineers had been lower down in amongst the grass and the heather, they wouldn't have stood out at all and it wouldn't have been nearly as powerful as seeing them against that backdrop. So G, it means good contrast around your subject. If you can get it, try it. H in delights is about helping the eye. H to help. And what I mean by that is help the eye move through the photograph. Now here is a river, a stream, running around the bottom left hand side of the photograph and it leads the eye into the photograph. It's got some contrast in it there, the sun bouncing off it. So it draws you in. The eye, by the way, is always attracted to light things. So that's the first thing you see when you look at a photograph is the light stuff. So there we are. We have nice light water drawing in the eye into the village. And then your eye reaches that house and tree near the right hand side and stops because I have a block there. The trees and the bushes block the eye from moving any further. And then it moves left off through the village. There's lovely smoke coming out of the chimneys. There's a story being told there. I don't know what it is, but you can imagine what's going on in these little houses in the village. And then of course, there's the beautiful mountains behind that I've put near one of the top thirds. So this is a sort of mixture of many of the concepts we've talked about so far and H, 
is help the eye move around the photograph. T is tone. Tone attracts. Tone attracts the eye. Now I mentioned that on the last photograph when we talked about the river there being bright with the sun bouncing off the water, which helps the eye get drawn into the image. It looks for bright things. And here we have a lot of tone around the subject of this image, which are these straw bales. Now the straw bales are wrapped in plastic so the sun can really bounce off the sides of those. And if you could position yourself just right, you'll get a lovely reflection of that light and it enhances the tonal contrast. So these subjects have got this lovely shadow against this very bright light and that makes the subjects very powerful in the photograph. Just to add to the image, we've put the horizon on the top third and there's also lovely contrast between the horizon and the sky. It's almost a silhouette. And I like that. There's more tonal contrast there. And so this is very attractive to the eye, all these tonal contrasts in this image. With black and white photography, we don't have any color which can attract the eye in the photograph. But what we do have is tonal contrast and tonal rendition. And this is what we want to try to amplify in our black and white images uh, to make them bounce, to make them strong, to make them powerful. Let's look at S. S stands for two things, but I've said simplicity can break the rules. That's the first thing I think about when I think of S, simplicity. Now, look at this image. I've broken every rule. There's, there's no rules here. The horizon is right in the middle. The Nissan hut isn't on a third. It's not on an intersecting line, a leading line. It looks pretty drab, actually. It's not a particularly attractive building to photograph. But this was a Second World War airfield that I found. And I was trying to photograph these Nissan huts. It was interesting to me. And then when I walked into one and I turned around, I saw this Nissan hut framed by these broken windows. And it just told the story of the Second World War and the airfield and everything about it. It just, it just told that story. It was powerful. And that simplicity of telling the story, of framing it with these broken windows and glass lying around, and it told that story so powerfully that it didn't matter about any of the other rules. You can break all of the rules if you've got a most powerful story to tell. If you can simplify your photograph right down to the basics where people will look at it and feel emotion and want to know something about it. They conjure up the story in their own mind of what they're looking at. So there's the acronym DELIGHTS. And I hope that it's something that you'll try and play with and see if it helps you. Um, I'm going to put a link in the notes below so you can jump to my website and print the page off so it's a reminder to you. Carry it around in your pocket. Get it out whenever you're setting up your camera and have a look at it and see if you can implement any or many or all or just some of these tips to composition. I hope it improves your photography. It really has improved mine over the many years I've been photographing. And I've always got this in the back of my mind. If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you on Friday because I've got a great tip for you.